Okay, so I'm going to look at the concept of implied volatility and link that to option pricing and Blackstone's model. Implied volatility uh, is a key concept in understanding option pricing. Uh, also, in terms of understanding the relative expensiveness of a particular option, implied volatility, higher levels of implied vol volatility tend to note uh, that options are being priced a little bit higher uh, to the market by traders. Uh, so initially I'll go into uh, modules and find uh, the spreadsheet. In this instance that doesn't have a module, insert a module. So it's a brand new module and it's empty of code. And I paste in the code that I previously had been looking at. And basically, what I have here is a Black Shoals uh, call function. And afterwards, I'll, I will look at how we can use um, Black Shoals parameters to uncover what the implied volatility is associated with a particular option. So if we knew the option price, back out the implied volatility. So initially here, uh, we'll set out the function for black shows. I might copy that and go into the spreadsheet and just paste in the basic code. And so what I could say is if I knew the stock price or the underlying value of the asset, the exercise price of the option, if I knew the risk fee rate, or I'll keep the sequence in the same order as I have here in the parameters, uh, Q, so continuous dividend yield, sigma, it's the volatility, the historical volatility perhaps, it's the volatility of the return, and the time period, the maturity in the contract. And we could just put in um, Values okay, I'll be relatively arbitrary. So 100, 100, 5 percent, uh, dip and yield of perhaps two, sigma 20 percent, time period one year. So we have the underlying value of the contract, we have the exercise, we have the interest rate, which is also is a continuously compound rate dividend yield, sigma, time period. If I want to uncover the Black Shoals call price, right? I just take the function. So we can take this function here. BSC, so that's the BS call. And I will paste, introduce an equal sign in front, and then link S to the stock price, K to the exercise, I will link R to the risk to rate, Q to the dividend yield, the sigma to the, the volatility that has been done, has been uh, published with the details of the option contract and the time period time period is the maturity of the contract and hit return. And we get a value of the option equal to 9.22. Now, um, we could check this a little bit. Uh, what if we change this to zero? To zero? If there's no dividend yield, the value of the option would be 10.45. And that would correspond with uh, values that I'm familiar with. Um, if I put in uh, 0 0.05 and so on, what if I increase the value of the underlying to 110, does the value of the call go up in turn, and yes it does, what if I reduce it, it goes down, what if I increase volatility, value of the option went up, what if I reduce back, it goes back down, and change it to zero again. So th these could be our starting values, and they can be checked against uh, Black Scholes uh, formula. Uh, the formula here in, is described in the VBA code. Uh, so normally with 
when you're setting out the Black Shoals formula, if you're doing it manually, you have to determine the value of d1 and d2, and d1 is the natural logarithm of the stock price divided by the value of the exercise r negative q plus 0 0.5 times sigma squared multiplied by t all divided by sigma over square root of t and d2 is d1 minus sigma square root of t norm nd1 nd2 here is used to denote the norms this so in other words the normal normal cumulative probability of d1 where we assume that d1 has a mean because it's s st means standardized and so assuming the mean is zero standard deviation of one and again uh, as originally hypothesized by black scholes the value to call e negative qt by s by nd1 minus e negative rt by k n d2 so that's the value of the the call option now very often uh, the the problems for traders is you see you already see the value of the option it's trading are there some options that are very liquid that trade in the market and then you're looking at how do you infer the value of another option but you're not sure what the volatility is. So typically in a contract, this is clear. You'll know from the current value to the underlying that perhaps the stock, if it's a call option on a stock, the stock is trading at a particular price. The exercise is specified in the contract. The risk free rate is a government that, you know, yield on a treasury bill uh, for the period of the option perhaps excluding coupons the coupon excluding coupons the dividend yield <clears throat> uh, may be reported with the details of the stock so you're looking for information relating to the stock and where uh, the dividend yield is presented as a piece of relevant information but sigma is something uh, that might not be automatically available uh, unlike uh, the time period again this is something that's clearly specified in the contract the expiry is within one year or has a particular date so you can infer that the maturity of the contract but sigma is not something that we necessarily will know uh, we might be able to calculate using historical data so we could take the log difference of historical prices over a particular time period and then infer the annualized re, uh, volatility of the return on the stock price. But that's historical also and uh, excludes the expectations. It's not perhaps uh, indicative of... Uh, investor expectations about the volatility of the underlying so ex ante and ex, ex post measures may differ substantially from ex ante measures where you're looking ahead to the future and perhaps uh, there could be lower or higher levels of uncertainty about the future so uh, typically what traders will do they go to the option pages perhaps you know, Roger Thompson or Bloomberg, or get a broker's report, and they determine what the uh, implied volatility is associated with um, uh, existing contracts, and then use that to infer the price. If you have the price, then how do you get the, the volatility? And that then becomes a question of getting implied volatility. So, in a sense, if you took the uh, representation here of the Black Scholes equation in VBA, how do we isolate sigma and present it as a function of all the other variables? Um, as it turns out, that's not something that uh, be, can be done in closed form solution. 
we can't derive a formula that presents us with an expression where sigma can be set up as a product of all the other variables. Having said that, um, there is a relatively simple technique where we can use a built-in function or a built-in um, facility on in Excel where we can determine what the value of sigma is using a kind of iterative search. So for instance, uh, let's take these values again. And so now the value of the call here is dependent on the inputs coming from here. We could ask the question uh, using uh, data and then using what if analysis and then going to go seek. We could ask the following question. What would be the value of set the value of the option? So we could think of this as a kind of a target value for the option. And uh, it might be, so what if we observed that the value of the particular option in the market was 1050? What would be, if all the other parameters, if the S, K, R, Q, and T were fixed, what would be the value of implied volatility consistent with a stock, with a call value 10.50. So this is a, we could try that and we find that if the value, if the value of sigma was 20%, 20.13%, then the value of the option would be 10.50. And again, we could try that again. We could go data, what if analysis, go seek, set this equal to a value of 10.60. Or 11, let's try 11 dollars by changing the volatility, the input parameter for volatility. What level of volatility would be consistent with a price of 11? And you can see here it goes up to 21 and so on. So, uh, that's a, a relatively handy procedure to use, very, very convenient, very intuitive. One downside, of course, is that it's not convenient when you have to calculate implied volatility for a large number of um, option prices. So if you were constructing a volatility surface or a volatility smile and you had a range of option prices and you want to infer a vector or a range of, of implied volatilities consistent with those option prices, then this becomes a little bit tedious and how do we automate the grid search that we implemented in implied volatility uh, in a more uh, useful uh, format. So we can go back into the developer tab again and we can come down here and we can look at a function uh, which uses uh, the bisection technique and Essentially what this does, it sets out, it says, okay, if we know the value of the stock price, the exercise, risk rate, dividend yield, time period, and we know the value that the call trades for in the market, can we narrow down, can we determine the value of implied volatility? So uh, here, Take code, we'll copy, and we'll go back into the spreadsheet. And we'll just paste in so we'll have for, we'll just paste in so that we have as for a reference. Okay, so we have the function here. Perhaps we might make this slightly smaller, maybe too small. Okay, or we can remove this code. and paste and then just move this up delete a few cells and the rest of this explanation then I'll put into a second uh, video clip